I chose back. Yes, I chose back. I love it. Man, we're going to have to rename this show. I mean, we, we do speak for ourselves. And I mean, speak for yourself is real, but we've got a little yin yang going on here right now because I think where you started is where I'm going to start and I'm going to end, which is there's no excuse for what I saw last night. And Will Smith, who's someone I truly respect, his grind, his drive, his accomplishments, uh, what he tries to embody, I mean, Whew, next level, obviously. I respect them, but I really felt this one, and it hurt. Let me tell you why. Will Smith needs to understand, never risk it all, man, especially when there's nothing to gain. And there was nothing to gain in that moment for him going on that stage. Oh, no, I can hear y'all right now. No, 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 you got to defend your woman. Defend her honor. Protect her. Let me tell y'all something. I grew up around these people. I'm going to take up for my woman. Somebody say something to my woman. Look at my woman. Do anything for my woman. I'm going to take up for her. I said, there's one thing better than taking up for your woman, taking care of your woman. Because mm -hmm. if you take care of your woman, then these things become trivial. You laugh at that because you know it doesn't have an impact and effect on her because you know her better than anybody, especially a joke. But I understand this is the joke that broke the camel's back. It's the last straw. And it's funny because Will Smith got to the point of the last straw. I think in the whole entanglement conversation and all the public shaming that's been coming to this marriage and to Will Smith, he sound like he made a deal with himself. I'm going to take this one on the chin, August Alcina and all that conversation, the red table talk, but that's the last one. Bruh, don't... You just posted it. Please, people out there, don't put a period where you should put a comma. Mm -hmm. Will Smith... Don't make this your last straw. And then I saw him finally go over, and he finally just crossed to a dark side that I'd never seen from Will Smith, at least publicly, let's be real. And it was classic overcorrection. Over You're right. He was living out childhood trauma right there in that moment. And it got exacerbated, obviously, because of everything else he's been going through. But, bruh, displaced aggression to the fullest. What does Chris Rock in the joke have to do with the fact that your wife has an issue and she is suffering from an ailment. Let me tell you why. Because I'm protecting comedians' rights. They should be able to say whatever they want. Want to know why? I grew up on comedians that talked about dead people. And now we can't talk about your sick wife? I grew up on comedians and still like comedians that talk about any and everything. You know why? Because you have to know that you're different than what they're talking about. If we can't talk freedom of speech about any and every issue, and we only have to talk from the point of pain and how it's going to be lived through by you, the respondent, then I don't like this level. I don't like this level of conversation. My greatest disappointment in Will Smith is he's one of our leaders in terms of, like, really young people who want to aspire to be something and really do it the right way. Got a family, took care of his family from West Philly all the way to the greatness. We all grew up on the Fresh Prince. Like... If our leaders lead like this, boy, where are we really going? I love it. And we going to... He has a greater fight to fight. And this is why that was sad. It was sad because you fought somebody that wasn't in the fight. You have an issue with whatever Jada's going through, and you know that deeper than anyone else and personalize it greater than all of us could articulate, right? But the cause of that is out of our hands. So why are you fighting us? Once again, displaced aggression. Chris Rock just became now the conduit of all the issues and pain and problems you're having. But who you need to have that conversation and that fight with is not Chris Rock. So therefore, hitting Chris Rock makes no sense. Let's not get lost in, well, he's a comedian who went too far. He didn't start any of this. Matter of fact, he was the recipient of a assault, a battery, a slap. In worldwide television, like, it can never replace... You can never go back on this. This is for life. And I don't like it. Let me tell you a couple reasons why. Too much is given, much is... Required. In. Yes, sir. Will, man, we look at you like that. And I heard you bring in race into this conversation. So, since you bring it, I bring it with you. There's a narrative out there. Tell me if it's true or not. Not by my example, not by my experience, because my experience is my expertise. But there's a narrative out there, and it's a back and forth. Oh, man. You see the Oscars, hosted by a black man. Presented this award by a black man. Getting assaulted by a black man. And the winner of the award was a black man. And there's a narrative out there that, man, 
It's a little bit of violence in that community over there. Then you hear the black people say, oh, no, every community commits crimes against their own, which is true. But here's a statistic that is also retorted, and then you start to say, damn. Of the violent crimes in our country, 52% are committed by 6% of the people. You want to know who they are? Black men. As two black men up here hosting this show right now, there's a huge responsibility of how we carry ourselves. 6% of the country's population commits 52% of the violent crimes, including murder. That's gangster. Now, how do you combat that? One, you obviously do it through action, but two, you do it through representation and messaging. Last night was a huge message and a huge opportunity to represent. And look what becomes the story forever. They literally have written now the most infamous moment in Oscar's history. Think about, we go back to Humphrey Bogart. Now, the most infamous moment ever will be Will Smith. The ambassador, the gold standard, Will Smith, representing us, and this is how he leads. My man, let me tell you one more thing about this. I didn't like it because I, in part, I make decisions because I know how it's going to be looked upon from my family, from my friends, from those who I represent. I'm from Compton. You playing a role of a man who was living in Compton and Richard Williams, and you want to take the role to a place where you're going to now depict my neighborhood, my situation and circumstances, as a place that justifies the violence. When we're sitting there our whole life and existence, like, nah, B, it's a few bad apples, maybe more bad apples than in normal neighborhoods. But don't try and globalize us like this. And we've been fighting that narrative. And then Will Smith gonna go in a role, and then after the role of slapping him, gonna try and justify it in the name of love. Oh, my God. Uh, do you have anything else on this one? I mean, I, the because only Because I got, I'm gonna close with one more. News. Well, I just heard Coven say he could have walked out as well. You know, a lot of times they tell you to walk away from a fight and win the war and lose that battle. We'll see how that plays out. Um, that was my approach in life. I ain't fighting you, dog. Because I just... One, uh, Will Smith didn't stop anything. Have you seen the internet lately? You can't stop something from something and someone who didn't start it. You, you just displace the variables. Like, oh, I'm about to get on Acho. Why? Because I'm mad at my mama. <laughs> Wait till I get home. My mama's still gonna be in my head, and Nacho gonna be sitting there with a swollen lip. It just was senseless on that. He's too smart. What I would do in the MJ situation, because you caught me there, you know me. That, that's my kryptonite right there, right? Superman can't fly the same. There's something wrong with my little man, MJ. We talk about this already. Know the difference between what hurts and what's harmful. And they're different. You got to go through the process of learning who you are and what you are and true identity and success by painful, hurtful moments. But harmful is a different animal. Coming to assault someone or trying to get in someone's physical space can harm them. But someone saying something to you, that doesn't have to be the same I level disagree. of harm. Oh, of course you disagree, and I respect your disagreement. But... You have now elevated what was just hurtful to what can be harmful. If I say, Acho, you look a mess today, that could hurt you. But if you come over here and want to slap me because of that, now you can harm me. We playing two different games here. But you are the one that took it to the next level of ascension. There's a responsibility that comes from that. But I'm listening. Ah, the, I be Ooh, we got to have a whole show on that. Good luck trying to press charges about a joke, but... You press charges, you put some hands on me. It's a whole different world out there, like in terms of consequence. Mm -hmm. So that, that lends itself to my point. Uh, I, let, we got to button up on something. We could keep going, <laughs> right? Let me give you my story growing up with the gangsters. The gangsters had me deceived at first. The gangsters looked more powerful. They had the money, they had the cars, they had the girls, they had the attention of the neighborhood. The gangsters were winning, right? And then, and then the gangsters had the bullying and, you know, the intimidation, all that stuff. And then it finally hit me because I had a few family members who were gangsters, so I got to go behind the veil and say, oh, wait a minute, that's a projection. That's a persona. What's really going on? What's your character and identity really looking like? And I kind of came up with a Wileyism that, oh, he hit first because he hurts worse. In this situation, Will went up there, wow, sneak attack, and walked back feeling good, but still in that same pain. He only hit first 
because he actually hurt worse. Coming up, Aaron Rodgers is staying in Green Bay.